Chapter two. When we got to school the next day, Hillary Kimball was holding court at the door. She's not real, Hillary said. She was sneering. She's an actress, it's a scam, someone called out. Who's scamming us? The administration, the principal, who else? Who cares? Hillary wagged her head at the absurdity of the question. A hand flashed in the air. Why? School spirit, she spat back. They think this place was too dead last year. They think if they plant some nutcase in with the students, well, some nutcase who stirs things up, then maybe all the little students will go to a game once in a while or join a club. Hillary Kimball's theory spread throughout the school and was widely accepted. You think Hillary's right, Kevin asked me? Stargirl's a plant? I snickered. Listen to yourself. He spread his arms. What? This is Micah Area High School, I reminded him. Not a CIA operation. Maybe not, he said, but I hope Hillary's right. Why would you hope that if she's not a real student? We can't have her on hot seat. Kevin wagged his head and grinned. As usual, the director, you fail to see the whole picture. We could use the show to expose her. Can't you see it? He did the marquee thing with his hands. Hot seat uncovers faculty hoax. I stared at him. You want her to be a fake, don't you? He grinned ear to ear. Absolutely. Our ratings will be going sky high. I had to admit, the more I saw her, the easier it was to believe she was a plant, a joke, anything but real. On that second day, she wore bright red baggy shorts with a bib and shoulder straps, overall shorts. Her sandy hair was pulled back into twin plated pigtails, each tied with bright red ribbon. A rouge smudge applied each cheek and she had even dabbed some oversized freckles on her face. She looked like Heidi or Bo Peep. At lunch, she was alone again at her table. As before, when she finished eating, she took up her ukulele, but the time she didn't, this time she didn't play. She got up and started walking amongst the tables. She stared at us. She stared at one face, then another and another. The kind of bold I'm looking at you stare you almost never get from people, especially strangers. She appeared to be looking for someone and the whole lunchroom had become very uncomfortable. As she approached our table, I thought, what if she's looking for me? The thought terrified me. So I turned from her. I looked at Kevin. I watched his grin, him grin goofily up at her. He wiggled his fingers at her and whispered, hi, star girl. I didn't hear an answer. I was intensely aware of her passing behind my chair. She stopped two tables away and she was smiling at a putting body senior named Alan Furco. The lunchroom was dead silent. She started strumming the uke and singing. It was happy birthday. And when she came to his name, she didn't sing just his first name, but his full name. Happy birthday, dear Alan Furku. Alan Furku's face turned red as Bo Peep's pigtail ribbons. There was a flurry of whistles and hoots, more for Alan Furku, I think, than hers. As Stargirl marched out, I could see Hillary Kimball across the lunchroom rising from her seat, pointing and saying something I could not hear. I'll tell you one thing, Kevin said as we joined the mob in the hallways. She better be fake. I asked him what he meant. I mean, if she's real, she's in big trouble. How long do you think somebody who's really like that is going to last around here? <laughs> Good question. Micah Area High School, MAHS, was not exactly the hotbed of nonconformity. There were individual variations here and there, of course, but within pretty narrow limits. We're all, we all wore the same clothes, talked the same way, ate the same food, listened to the same music. Even our dorks and nerds had an MH, MAHS stamp on them. If we happened to somehow distinguish ourselves, we quickly snapped back into place like rubber bands. Kevin was right. It was unthinkable that Stargirl could survive or at least survive unchanged amongst us. But it was also clear that Hillary Kimball was at least half right. This person calling herself Stargirl may or may not have been the faculty plant for school spirit, but whatever she was, she was not real. She couldn't be. Several times in those early weeks of September, she showed up in something outrageous, a 1920s flapper dress, an Indian buckskin, a kimono. One day she wore a denim mini skirt with green stockings crawling up one leg was a parade of enamel ladybugs and butterfly pins. Normal for her was long floor brushing pioneer dresses and skirts. Every few days in the lunchroom, she serenaded someone new with a happy birthday. I was glad my birthday wasn't until the summer. 
In the hallway, she said hello to perfect strangers. The seniors couldn't believe it. They had never seen a 10th grader so bold. In class, she was always flapping her hands in the air, asking any questions, through the question, though the question often had nothing to do with the subject. One day, she asked a question about trolls in U.S. history class. She made up a song about isosceles triangles. She sang it so her, to her plain geometry class, and it was called Three Sides, Half Eye, But Only Two Are Equal. She joined the cross-country team. Our home meets were held on the Micah Con Con Country Club golf course. Red flags showed the runners the way to go. In her first meet out in the middle of the course, she turned left when everyone else turned right. They waited for her at the finish line. She never showed up. She was dismissed from the team. One day, a girl screamed in the hallway, and she had seen a tiny brown face pop up from Stargirl Sunflower Canvas bag. It was her pet rat. It rode to school in her bag every day. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty strange pet. <laughs> One morning, we had a rare rainfall. It came during gym class, and the teacher told everyone to come in. On the way to the next class, she looked out the window. Stargirl was still outside in the rain, dancing. We wanted to define her to wrap her up as we did each other, but we could not seem to get past weird and strange and goofy. Her ways knocked us off balance. A single word seemed to hover in the cloudless sky over the school. Huh? Everything she did seemed to echo Hillary Kimball. She's not real. She's not real. And each night in bed, I thought of her as the moon came through my window. I could have lowered my shade to make it darker and easier to sleep, but I never did. In the moonlight hour, I acquired a sense of otherness of things. I liked the feeling the moonlight gave me, as if it wasn't the opposite of the day, but its underside, its private side. And when the fabulous purred on my fab, and when the fabulous purred on my snow white sheet like some dark cat coming from the desert, it was during one of those night moon times that it came to me that Hillary Kimball was wrong. Star Girl was real.